Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, hi. Hi. I'm not sure. I think one okay. Yes, there's one response. Okay. So um, today I'll be talking about um, compound spelt. So we're talking about spelt, right? So I'm not sure whether everyone knows about spelt. Um, it's like a fairly new-ish framework. Um, so yeah. So I think last year is the only is the first year that spelt was in. Uh, first, first year that spell was part of the state of JS survey, uh, so you can know that it's like relatively new compared to um, other frameworks out there like uh, React or Vue or Angular, right? So um, one thing that is very cool about spell is that um, the initial bundle size, if you are using a spell framework, your application initial bundle size will be much smaller compared to say React. So in this uh, I, I probably will share the link later on. Um, so on, on this article, so there's this article saying whether uh, it's the spelt skills. So if you look at the chart, right, uh, like if like the initial, like this is like the initial, uh, the, the horizontal axis is the, the size of the code that you write and the vertical axis is the, the size of the code that is being output, right? Uh, so, if you see over here uh, in the zero mark where you don't really have much code near to zero, uh, you, the, so the blue line is for like the React uh, bundle size and the orange line is for spelt, right? So over here, if you look at it, um, when you have a very small code base, right? Uh, for React, you already have like a certain size, bundle size that is being included. That's the React runtime library, right? So it's like once you import React and maybe you just do a hello world application, your app is like this yay big in terms of bundle size. But for Spill, it's the initial one, the initial size is very small and yeah, and it grows linearly like with along with your application, right? Um, so more to this chart, but uh, I'm just gonna state like th this point over here for now. Right, so today I'll be talking about compile spelt in your head. Um, so why is that compile spelt in your head, right? Um, I'll be covered, like I will explain why later on. Um, so yeah, so my name is, so a bit of myself. So my name is Li Hao. Um, so that's my Twitter link. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. Um, so I'm a front end engineer at Shopee and also currently uh, maintainer of spell. The, so let's, let's start with, um, let's just start with like building a application, uh, like jar, uh, web application without any JavaScript framework, right? So let's just do a recap on, let's do a recap on like, how do you create elements on, like when you're building a website. So back in, like, so if you're just using, if you are using only JavaScript, then you would use something like a JavaScript API to create elements, right? So here is how you create like a H1 element. Uh, you use document, create element, and then you set like text content to say hello world, and then you open it to the body of the browser, like DOM, right? So, so you have, you have created like a H1 tag with a text in it. Right, and when you want to update, say the H1, like the header one, uh, what you do is you can, uh, you can like set the text content and then the text will change to say by world. Um, to remove it, you use it. So document body or remove child. Um, and lastly, uh, if you want to add styles, uh, what you can do is you can over here, I think probably you can see the mouse cursor. Over here, you can create an element, like style element, and then you append like whatever the, your CSS as a content, and then you append that at, at your head. That will create like a, that will create a style dynamically via JavaScript. And to style it, yeah, you set attribute like class to the element and yeah, you will have like add the ABC class to this header and then you style it via the CSS. Uh, lastly is 
for for example if you want interactive interactivity in your application probably you would uh, sorry probably you would add event listeners over here to say on click listeners and you will listen to click events yeah so this is uh, the basic of the basis of uh, building a dy dynamic application on the front end uh, via JavaScript API. So you may be using say Vue or React or other frameworks, uh, but it boils down to like all these operations at the very low level, right? You can write JXX, but uh, when React interprets it, you will create an element. And how does it create element? It still goes down to creating an element using like the, this browser's API, right? So next, I will talk about Svelte. So Svelte is um, a web framework that is a little bit different uh, in terms of the approach of um, how it works. So Svelte is like a compiler where it tries to when you have a Svelte component, it will try to um, compulse it uh, into JavaScript and it will try to come out with like all these operations as just a JavaScript output. Um, so I'll cover that even more later. So that's like a, a rough introduction of Svelte. So let's look at, take a look at how you would write a Svelte component. Um, so here is how you write like hello world. So over here, probably I think for the benefit, probably we can go to the Svelte website. Uh, here you have a REPL, so you can play around like a playground to play around like uh, writing a Svelte component. Um, so, so here is how you write. Uh, okay, so let me start with the first one. So you can, so Svelte syntax is like um, HTML syntax. So you can copy like HTML code in it and you like the syntax itself feels very familiar with HTML, right? It's, it's purposely so. And as well component, you have, uh, you use a file that ends with a dot as well. Right, so, so here, if you want to create a H1 element with a hello world, yeah, you just do it, like you just write it this way. Um, so if you want like some styles, you can add a style tag and then you can target H1 to the, element that you want to target thing, right? So uh, one thing that's cool about this one is that uh, the styles, when you're writing H1, like the styles over here is only scoped within uh, this component. So what does it mean is that if say you have component two over here and it also have a H1 tag, um, and if you try to include that component, Sorry. Uh, then um, the the style will only applies to like the H one within this component, not any other components. Right? You only see one H one over here. Then only this one H one is being style. Right. Um, next thing is. Uh, I think we seen just now, uh, if you want to have like JavaScript code or data inside in your application, then you add a script tag, right? So here you create a script tag. And then if you want to use the, like you can just, you can declare a variable, like say name and, and to use it, you use like a curly brackets around it in the templates. So here I use bra curly brackets name. So this refers to world. So you have hello world. Um, so next thing is that um, to add event listeners, uh, there's a directive called on directive. Okay, I think space it up a bit. So you can add on colon, uh, click, and then you pass in a function. So again, uh, with like JavaScript code or expressions, you wrap it around with a curly brackets. And then updates is this function. So when you click on hello world, you'll start to see like console, right? Because yeah, this is how you add event listener. Then nextly you have, uh, you can change uh, the data, like just now I use name, now I change it to Svelte. Um, so 
I can just set it like like assign the new value to the variable, right? So when I click, it will change to svelte, right? So there's no um, like uh, set state or like any API to do it. You just uh, you assign it like how you would assign a variable. And how does that work? Uh, I will talk about it later on. All right, so I think we covered all the examples over here. So the next thing is we're going to talk about uh, compile spells in your head, right? So how does, so if you look at all these examples, right? If you look at, uh, this is a result and if you click on the JS output, you'll see that when you write this, uh, it compiles to like this code in JavaScript. So, um, so what I'm going to do now from now onwards is to uh, explain like bits by bits how each of them works. Uh, I will try to build uh, from a very small like a hello world to like adding event listeners and adding styles and we will observe how it changes. So, and then we will see like how each pieces uh, piece together in, in like a final JavaScript output of a spell compiler. All right, so let's get back here. Uh, let's go. So the first one is uh, hello world, hello world in a H1 tag. So if you write this, if you take a look just now, right, I think I showed you just now, you will see something like this. Uh, so there's two functions over here, or one function and one class, right, right two sections. So uh, the first one is a function called a create fragment and it returns an object with like three methods. So each of these methods uh, represents something, right? So the first one, uh, the C re represents create. So how, how you create, like how to create the elements and M is to mount. So how do you mount the elements that you created onto the DOM? And the last one, D, it means destroy. So it's to remove when you say, uh, announce your component, right? So here I have like h1 equals to element bracket h1. Uh, this, if you click into, if you look in the source code on how this implements, the element will be just, will be like document dot create element, right? Because it's repeated a lot of times, um, so that's why we use a function is, yeah, to to have a better minification. Um, the next part is the class, right? The class app. So uh, each Spell component has a default export, and that default export is exporting the component itself. And you can use the component like so, where you instantiate it and pass in a target, um, say where you want to mount this component, and then you can pass in some props like data, right? Um, yeah. So, and next thing is that if you can see here, there's an init function in the constructor. And here is where I pass in the create fragment, right? So th this is how the, the top part and the bottom part links together. So you pass in a create fragment function in the init function and it will initialize the component and create this element, hello world. So if you try to remove everything, right? Uh, one spell component is still a component. You can still use it. It just don't have a, it's just an empty component, right? So uh, spell, will always tries to optimize its like JavaScript output. So in this case, you still have a, it still export some code, like uh, export default class, uh, export that component, but because there's nothing in the template, uh, it will pass a null to the create, instead of create fragment. So this, this just shows that uh, your output code, code grows or shrinks like linearly or like proportional with the code that you've written for your application. So if you look, at, take a look into the init function, uh, there's a lot of things, right? Uh, one thing probably I can quickly point out is say like the dollar dollar thing. Uh, that is like the, like a init, uh, the instance property that contains all the internal API. So probably you shouldn't use it even if you are you're able to access it. Um, and then there's like a context. Um, and then there's update and yeah. So there's a lot of things. Uh, I'll probably cover them later on. And yeah, more of it. So next thing is that we want, when you add data, like when you have a variable, like a, inside a curly brackets, 
um, what happens. Um, so now you, instead of, so now you have to like dynamically add like the name in the text content, right? Um, so one thing you can see is that whatever you write in the script tag, most of the things will be also part of the output code, right? So here you write let name equals world, you will be copy verbatim over here. Um, but if you add, if you add one more function to update the name, uh, you will see that the code will change quite drastically from what we see over here. Um, here you see that uh, we have another new function, a new function called instance. Um, so instance returns, okay, so yeah, so let's go from top to bottom first. So uh, we, right now we broke, broke down the text into two parts, right? So here you don't pass in name anymore, you pass in a context, uh, the first item of context, right? What's that? We'll cover that later also. Um, then next thing is that because uh, the text over here can be changed, right? Can be wool and then change to swell. So there's a new method over here, uh, P, which stands for update. And whenever it's dirty, which means like something has changed in the name, then you will set data, which is to set the text content of the, of the text node to the updated value, right? So I think from now you can roughly guess that context, the first item is context is the value of name, right? It's being passed here and here. So how does the name comes from, now you take a look at the instance, right? So instance returns an array, function array of variables. Um, the first item is name, right? So probably this will be strings into like here. Uh, so uh, forget that uh, instance is also passed into the init function. So previously, if you can recall, here is null because there's no like internal state of a component, there's no variables, so it's null. But once you add something, then it starts to turn into like a function, right? So previously there's no need for this function, then this function will not exist. Now you need it, then you have this function. Uh, so inside instance function, you copy also, copy the code in a script tag verbatim inside the body of the function. Um, so, so now it's like, why is there such a change? Just now you, you see like there's no instant function, but now you have like, what, what's happening? Uh, that's because felt tracks variable. Uh, so all the variables that you declare in the script tag, whether it's mutated, like you change it, right? uh, plus plus, like increment, decrement it, or you reassign it to a new value, right? uh, say you, assign it to a spell, uh, then, or you reference it in the template, say you use a curly brackets, you reference that variable, uh, whether it's writable or non writable, whether you export this variable or not exporting this variable, like all of these uh, behaviors are being tracked by Svelte. And it knows whether the name is being updated or not. That's why there's a change in the output code. So let's come back to here. Um, so here we, we returned an array of variables that is being used within, that's being referenced within a template. And the first variable that is being referenced is the name. That's why you see uh, context zero over here and also it's re referencing here. So this, uh, this is like a bit mass. Uh, I wouldn't develop it much, but can just assume that uh, when it's one, it means uh, the name is, has changed, right? Um, then you also see like a function called dollar dollar invalidate. So what is that? Let's come back later. But uh, so so we we see like the three parts of fragments, instance, and app, and how they string together inside. They are string together inside init, right? So how how does that work? So conceptually, instance is a function that returns like a list of variables. So that we call it a context. And that context over here is passed in into the create fragment function. Uh, so to create fragment, so fragment is this object. Uh, so I, I call it like a recipe of how to create mounts, update and delete. So like a recipe of how you uh, control something of a component. And then you call like fragment.c, which is to create the elements and then mount it to the target. Uh, so now we cover what is dollar dollar invalidate. 
So whenever you write something like uh, name equals to something, when you assign it a value, uh, you update it, like increment, decrement it, or you update a property of it, like foo.a equals to something. Uh, Svelte notices that and it will add, it will add one more statement called invalidate, right, for each of them. So you will know that, okay, name has changed. In this statement, after this, name has changed. After this count plus plus, count has changed. After this, foo has changed, right? Uh, so conceptually, uh, invalidate function takes in like what variable has changed and the value. So it updates the context and then mark that value as dirty. And what it does next is that uh, in a mark dirty, uh, it just said the variable is dirty, right? And it will schedule an update, right? So not the update doesn't happen immediately. For example, you if you have three statement of name equals something, count equals something, they are scheduled in one batch and then it's being flushed to the DOM at once, right? So yeah, so it's being flushed once. And then once after that, it clears the 30 uh, check. So now let's look at what happens when you add event listeners, right? Over here, you add on click listeners, right? Um, so how does that reflect is that, okay, so firstly, we have the, whatever the code is written in the script tag, copied over verbatim in the instance function. Then when you have a uh, event listeners uh, in the mounting and you will add, you will listen to the click event and you pass in the update function. So you take a look, update is now the second variable, a second item of the context. So yeah. And then it returns a dispose function, which is like a remove event listeners Right, so it's being cleaned up after when you destroy the component. So let's take a look. What if you add multiple event listeners to the same component, uh, to the same element or multiple elements within the same component? Uh, what's interesting is that uh, this post now becomes an array of all the unlistened functions. And then when it destroys it, we just run a run all to dispose of all of them, right? This like this is like instead of writing dispose one equals to the first listener uh, first like listen and dispose two and dispose three and then you call one by one. Uh, this the 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 output that Svelte gives is more optimized in terms of like the code size, right? Uh, maybe you create an array, but it's much smaller in code size. It's much compact, right? So on and on. I I guess I've given you enough of that hint of the flavor where. Spell always looks at the comp, uh, template and tries to generate the most compact output if possible. All right. So the last thing we look at is the style. So what happens when you have a style tag over here? Um, what happens is that actually Spell uh, for each component, it will generate like a hash value uh, and then add that hash value as a class for elements that's being um, targeted with, with all the selectors in the style tag. Right, so in this case, H1 is being targeted because you write H1 N, right? So this H1 will have a class called spelt uh, with the hash. And then uh, in the CSS, right, uh, you will also add this one hash class to the H1 uh, selector. So yes, the, prior, the specificity has increased by one as class. Uh, but then it's more specific and it's scoped within each component, right? So each component uh, it generates a different hash. So the class is different. So you won't target them. You only target all the elements that within this component. Uh, so a summary, uh, I think we covered like how, how like spell creates a component and how you add a style and how you add data and how you update data. And also lastly, how update event listeners, right? We also cover like what does the create fragment function do? Right, it returns like an object of like, I would call recipe of like how you create mounts, update and destroy. And then the instance function where it returns like a list of internal variables and you use dollar dollar invalidate when you change something. So this function will be called so that you know that something has changed. And lastly, you have like an app where each component will have export default of the app class, uh, which you can instantiate. Right, so what's next is, um, so here are some links. Uh, if you're interested in Svelte, uh, you can always check out the tutorial, like the REPL. This is the link that I was showing just now. Uh, and then we have the like, community sites. 
also we have a very uh, active like discord discussion where everyone if you have any question about as well you can go in join in the discord lastly you have twitter right um so that's all from me um yeah uh there's actually like a, a virtual clap button. Oh, sorry. Uh. Okay, <laughs> kidding. Uh, so thanks a lot. Uh, any questions? Please uh, unmute your mic and then speak. Hi. Should I unmute everyone? <laughs> Hello, I hear you, but it needs to be a bit louder, please. Okay, uh, is it better? Uh, a little bit better, yes. Uh, just one question, like, most mm -hmm. of the existing components have UI themes and guides, like, to start with, right? So it's easier to build any front-end component. So uh, what about Svelte? Does it, does it offer any like, UI components? Uh, you, you showed us about how to fetch the data and all the stuff, but basically the Component, if there are any out of box uh, UI components to build with, that would be great, help, right? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, so, um, there's so, um, so there's like a that that's more like a community, uh, like the community has like built uh, like a bootstrap version for Spell. Um, there's like I, I can't remember all the names, but yeah, there's like Bul Bulma version of Spell. So, there's like all the different frameworks they they do like there's people in the community that builds a spell version of that those uh, UI components. Uh, is that what you're referring to? Um, yeah. Yeah. So and also I guess um, spell is is like very closely to JavaScript, right? So if you're using things like uh, Tailwind CSS or other CSS frameworks, right? Uh, those that that requires just like adding. HTML or adding some CSS, I think that will just works perfectly fine with Spell as well. Oh, okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. And I have other questions. So, a bit, when you start, you just showed about the bundle size, right? But compared mm -hmm. to React components and stuff, so mm -hmm. is that the only uh, problem that it tries to solve? Uh, the bundle size, uh, because if we are already using a uh, a React or Next.js or Vue.js, which are close to each other, right? And they have more mm -hmm. components. Why would someone uh, want to move to a new framework? Uh, like Spell, which is completely new, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, it's firstly, it's, it's um, I might be biased, but if you talk about like the developer experience, um, Spell is much more uh, friendlier in terms of it, it's, it's, Closer to HTML, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So, for example, for any web framework, uh, web developer or uh, designers that start out with learning uh, HTML and CSS and JavaScript, when you start using React or Vue, you have to learn like those. Um, the, the syntax is much more different. But for Spell, uh, it's it's closer to HTML. So you you write you still write HTML, but you add some curly brackets for data, right? So that's my personal bias that you you it's easier to learn. For uh, for my, uh, from my standpoint, but of course, uh, if you talk about like the performance itself and the bundle size, so uh, so from from very from the very beginning, the code size is much smaller, right? So you you have firstly you already have less code to pass, less code to execute, right? Secondly, uh, for uh, some of the frameworks, you you use something like a virtual DOM or like div comparison of like a you create like a object tree and then you compare whether it changes and then you apply the changes div to the DOM. But what spell does is that no, uh, it just call like document create element or like all the DOM API immediately, right? So it's much closer to the web API. So thus it's, it's much more performance and much more memory uh, efficient. Uh, hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, anyone else has any other questions? Uh, please feel free to take advantage of this moment to ask, yeah. If it's uh, something you're looking to explore, if you've already worked with it.
You can also type the question if you much prefer to. Uh, but definitely asking will be, will be clearer. Lah. Yep, there's a question on chat now. Uh, does Svelte still allow us to manipulate the DOM directly? Mm, yes, so probably I can share back my screen. Uh, maybe I can show, okay, so share something over here. Uh, say, so Svelte has something called an action. So what this means is that you, uh, for example, you have a library called, say, foo, where you, like some of those libraries in the early days where you, you initiate like jQuery and those things like that, where you take in like an element and then you manipulate it, right? So this is very similar. This works very well with that, those libraries. So for example, you have a function called foo that takes in an element. Um, you can like, it's felt there's thing, this thing called action, which starts with a use and a colon. So when you do it like this, uh, the element is being passed into this function. Right? It's being called for every instance of each one. So you can do things like uh, element dot text content equals to one. And yeah, so you, you can directly access to the elements that, uh, the element of the DOM, you can manipulate directly. And uh, maybe, yeah, that's, hopefully that's answer your question or, oops. So, long call? Um, Hi, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I want to speak, but I'm not sure if you guys can hear me well. Yeah, yeah. Can hear you well. Okay, great, yeah, because I, I uh, so, I feel like uh, I'm working with React right now and sometimes working with like external libraries, like mm -hmm. I, I have no other choice but to try to manipulate some of the DOMs directly because of the lack mm -hmm. of some APIs. Uh, I, I think another question that I have is that uh, like, for example, if you're looking at React, right, I, I guess the main code we use uh, pattern is using like React hooks and stuff. Mm -hmm. So in Svelte, uh, what, what do you see as the, like, the main way to like for code sharing and code reviews? Code sharing and um, I, I I don't okay. So I think I don't really have a very good answer for this one for now. Mm -hmm. Um, basic yeah. So we don't really have a very. I think it's it's still in the early days where yes, there's some like people have like different people have different preference and different um, best, uh, I, ways of doing things. For example, in mm -hmm. this. Like just now when you see I'm using an action, the function itself can be shared around, right? So the function that manipulates the DOM can be shared around and things like that, right? Um, so uh, so it, I think it's still early to say like there's a like patterns around uh, mm. and yeah, and probably, and maybe maybe I'm biased a bit where maybe it's, uh, it's simple enough that you don't really have to come up with like patterns to right. work, yeah. yeah. Okay, because, because from what I see, it, it's really like super flexible, right? Like you can just write mm. functions and import functions from elsewhere and use it. But I just thought like uh, maybe there's some patterns that are already known among the community that you'd like to share. Yeah, uh, thanks yeah. for that. Yeah, sure. Welcome. So uh, CK asked that, spell require, does spell require a build tool like Webpack, right? So, um, so when you write spell code, you need to compile it to JavaScript code. Um, so you can either use, uh, so it, it's something like a Babel where you write, uh, I, I guess everyone uses, like knows what is Babel, right? So it's like when you write a next generation of JavaScript, ES 2020 or 2021, you compile it down to a code, like a browser compatible code, right? So it's similar in that sense, right? So uh, when you want to use Babel with your build tool, then you use a Babel loader. So for Spell, you use a Spell loader for Webpack, right? So if you are using Rollup, you have like a Babel plugin for Rollup, then in Spell, you use a Spell Rollup plugin, right? But if you just want to um, say, build like a simple component uh, and you want to use your own build tool, like you don't want to bundle anything, that's fine as well. You can use Spell, uh, the API itself to compile the code and then it will gives you like JavaScript and the uh, source map and all the things. I have a question. 
Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, in your experience, have you seen what use cases have you seen that it works best, and like people use it over, let's like, say, React? Okay, use cases. Um, so, yeah, I would say like, I, I wouldn't say like better, but like this is more of my personal preference, uh, for personal opinions, right? Um, so cases where you have a much, uh, say you you have you have a higher need or in terms of uh, performance or memory, right? Or say you are using like embedded devices, uh, right now IoT devices that is running like browsers in it, those kind of thing. Uh, you you have a very high requirements on uh, the like very small memory footprint, then Svelte is definitely much better than React, right? Uh, in terms of memory footprint and uh, performance. Um, then, of course, like for example, if you don't care about those kind of things, like you are more, like maybe a web developer, then um, one, one thing that's better would be, um, for uh, say like static sites, right? Um, you, you mostly need like the HTML and adds a little bit of interaction. Uh, probably you don't need like a so spell has an SSR story about it. Um, what it does is also a compilation and it outputs it, it generates like a function that returns a string. So it it does string concatenation, uh, much like Vue tree, uh, string concatenation on all the things and then returns it as string. Uh, so React on the other hand, from what I know, is that it you it return like you use the SX right. So it's like an object and then serialize into a string and then return. Right. This is much uh, much more performance. It's it's a it's a different order of performance, uh, in in this sense. Uh, so just now I was saying the static site. So generating static sites is much performance. Uh, generating server side rendering is also much performance. Um, yeah. So I think these are the things that uh, people are starting to do it. But it doesn't limit like what Svelte can do. You can definitely go for like a building like a full fledged web application. I think that it's doable as well. Uh, and in fact, like the creator of Svelte itself is um, like the one of the engineers from uh, New York Times. So if you go to New York Times, you see like a lot of those kind of data visualizations, interactive uh, articles. Those are create, those are powered by Svelte, right? Those arises, uh, actually Svelte arises with the need that they want to do those kind of visualization and they find it hard to integrate with. Like do it with React. That's why they come up with Spell. Yeah. So hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Any other questions? We have time today for questions. If you like. Uh, I have one more question about the uh, the scoping of the like variable lah. So if, let's say like just now when you have the variable name in one of the Svelte file, right? Then hmm. uh, let's say you compose your uh, different components together, like can can the children of that component still access name, or you must pass down like props? Yeah, you pass down like props. Oh, okay. So is is there a mechanism that uh like to avoid like prop drilling and all those kind of thing, like? Uh, then, like there, context or... Yeah, there is context similar and also oh, okay. uh, there's also like a store like you uh, like in React you store you solve it with uh, either using a store like external oh. store data store or you use like a context so both exist in spell. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay. Thanks. Um, so Arul has a question where existing CSS frameworks does it work with existing CSS frameworks, right? Um, from what I know it works with Tailwind, uh, Bootstrap. Uh, I think uh, unless you're seeing frameworks like CSS in JS, uh, those I haven't really tried out, but any CSS frameworks that that uh, you import CSS and you add class names, yeah, those definitely will work. Any other questions? Does that answer your question? I guess, yeah. Does anyone else have a question? Okay, uh, if no one else has a question, you can reach, uh, oh, another question, yeah. 
How do I assign a style in CSS to H1, for example? A style as in like, um, style? Okay, probably you can do a quick screen share again. Uh, yeah, so I'm on your first slides. Wait, I can't see the chat. Never mind, uh, I'm just going to guess. Uh, but okay, so if you have a H1 over here, I'm guessing, are you referring to say, doing like a style color, right? Uh, is, that, is that what you are trying to ask? Okay, maybe I take a copy and stop share. I think it's specifically for, you know, assigning CSS classes with like Tailwind and something. Mm. Yeah, so it, yeah, you can just assign the class names. Uh, you, um, so you have like, so it depends on how you import or use Tailwind, right? Uh, if you are like importing as a CSS files at, at your, uh, H, like in, at the head of the HTML document, like import extra, import it, uh, like using a link and a href, then the classes are available and you can straight, uh, you can directly use it here, uh, use it in the spell component. Right. Um, so yeah, the, all the class names that written in the class, uh, in the element, uh, is, can be like, it can be a global CSS class name or could be like defined, declared locally. Right. Um, I guess that's no question. Yeah, welcome. Um, I guess if there's no question, then. Okay, uh, you can reach him on Twitter. Yep, uh, okay, let's do the link. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can just like maybe private chat if it's cool with you or reach him on mm. Twitter as well. Okay, so thanks a lot for giving this talk today. Thank you.